Hello world and welcome to this edition of Tech on Fire with Blaze. Today we're going to be looking at auto scale on app services on Azure. So when we talk about auto scale on Azure App Services, really what we're going to be looking at is the what is available inside of App Services. We've looked at the free and basic tier uh, on App Services in a previous video. We cannot consider these for auto scale because the feature is not available in these tiers. However, it is available in the standard tier and the premium tier on Azure. Also, when we talk about auto scaling on Azure App Services, we're not talking about the different kinds of scale of scale up. That is where you increase or decrease the tier for your app service that you're running. We're talking about scale out, which is increasing the number of instances that are available to an application. And with app services, you can scale out on a number of different metrics to add new instances of your application inside of an app service plan that has a particular amount of RAM compute and storage. So for the demo today, I'm going to be using a .NET Core application that finds all the prime numbers between a two and a given maximum. So if I pass in 100, it would list all the prime numbers between two and 100. This little app is designed to generate CPU load. So when I have an app that has CPU load, I can then use that as a metric to auto scale the number of instances that I'm going to have on my app service. So this little app is not very efficient. It's actually got uh, two nested loops and there's, there's probably a better way to figure out prime numbers. I'm just iterating over these and then adding it to a given output list if it is indeed prime. So this is exponentially large for a given number. So if, for, if I pass in 100, it's 100 squared for the number of operations that this is going to do. So it increases an order of magnitude with each uh, linear increase in the number of um, maximums that you put into this. So uh, to put some CPU lo load on the actual application, I can run this and then assign some arbitrarily large integer to it that will then take a while to compute, but it will be very CPU intense. So if I just do take the, the default, which I think is uh, 100, it actually runs fairly fast. So that would be um, all the numbers between 2 and 100. However, I put it 1,000, it gets, it's for, still fairly fast. The response time is decent. 10,000 takes a little bit longer, but not noticeably longer. But if I put in 100,000, it's going to sit there and spin a little bit, and then it will return these very quickly. So that's a good threshold for doing something that can generate a lot of CPU utilization on this little web API. And then what I can do then is send a lot of requests to this API on Azure using something like JMeter, and then that request Q will generate a lot of CPU utilization and then we can watch the application scale up and then scale back down. So with that in mind, let's go look at the Azure portal and look and see what kind of things I can actually scale on. But CPU utilization is one of them, but there's actually a lot of other metrics I can actually look. At. So I'm here in the Azure portal and I've pulled up the app service that I want to work with. However, the auto scale is actually handled by the app service plan. So the app service itself defines the conditions for the application that you're going to be running in app services. The app service plan defines the conditions for the resources available and the auto scale features that you can do with an app service plan. So whenever I have this particular uh, scale out and scale uh, in rules to find, they, I can assign it a lot of various values that I can use for the conditions to trigger a scale out. And then I can also define the the metric that or the number of instances that I actually want to add to or remove from a given uh, app service 
it, that is running. Now, when I look at these rules, I can click on the rule here that I already have defined, or I can click a new one to define it. Now, with this particular one, I can choose uh, my metric source. So I actually have a lot of different things I can choose from. For instance, I can actually look at the utilization of the app service uh, plan itself. And in that case, I would give it a look at memory utilization or CPU utilization or HTTP request queues and things like that. I could also look at something like service bus and or storage queues. And with a service bus queue or storage queue, uh, what that allows me to do is look at the length of that queue. And if it's uh, getting arbitrarily long and I need to add some more iterators on that, I could add a uh, no, more instances to my app service plan to iterate on that queue to process more of the uh, messages that are coming in on that. So the scale rules uh, give you a lot of available options here. Um, and if I click other services here, I can choose uh, from a number of different resources available on Azure and I can actually scale based on the other kinds of resources that I might have inside of Azure that might not have anything to nothing to do with my application but I can still use those as a basis for scaling my application so these would be more some of those edge cases uh, for these other resources however uh, the ones that I'm mostly going to be interested in are the ones that are probably going to be directly related to my application. Either it's something that my application consumes or it's something about my application that I uh, can monitor. And so with this, I can then set up some rules that will define the criteria on, on which I will scale. So I can do average, min, max, uh, total, last, and count. And for CPU percentage, if I want to scale on that, which is for this demo is what I want to use, I can select CPU percentage uh, and use that as the scaling metric that I want to use to indicate scale up or scale down. But notice I have all these other options here, disk IO, HTTP queue length, um, traffic in and out, and those kinds of things. Uh, and all of these give me different metrics I can scale on right within the context of the app service itself. Now, once I have my rule set, I can choose the metric. I can say, um, yeah, I can say instance equals to or some kind of other um, the dimension value here to just kind of show what I'm looking at just to, to uh, give me a baseline that will show up in this graph right here and that will give me uh, an idea of what I'm actually looking for uh, as a sample for which I can use to tune my rule down here so I've selected the average CPU uh, and gotten a, a basic baseline for that and it's sitting around 5%. However, to actually set the rule up in this wizard, I can then check uh, what I want to do. So I want to say, I want to look at the average uh, CPU utilization and I want to scale when the condition is greater than uh, 50%. And then the the sampling of that would be how many minutes. So I want to set one minute as the sampling time for that. And so I can choose a larger uh, time slice to figure out uh, the average CPU utilization for the last 10 minutes, five minutes, or whatever it might be. And that's going to really depend on your, the nature of your application. For mine, because it's really bursty and uh, the uh, nature of the HTTP request is really going to be determined by how large the integer I put in will be one minute is probably sufficient for uh, that kind of workload. So um, I'm going to say take the last minute if it's greater than 50% average utilization for my given application, then I want to increase the number of of instances by a given amount. But I can also increase by percentages as well. So if I want to increase by 100%, uh, percent, I could essentially double the number of instances uh, with this particular operation here. So if I had two instances, 100% uh, increase would be uh, four and then eight and then so on, depending on uh, 
the nature of the scale operation. I'm going to do it linearly though, and I'm going to do it by count, and I'm going to set it to two. Now there is also this this feature here called cooldown, which this basically means the wait period between a scale operation uh, and invoking a scale operation and the next time it would attempt to do that. So I'm going to set mine at one minute, so that if the next minute there is a still a high CPU utilization when even when I scale up then it will go ahead and increment that even more for the given workload that I've placed on this particular uh, app service here now again there are a lot of ways you can configure this and it doesn't really do a lot of intelligent checking so make sure that what you're putting into this makes sense uh, and uh, you can get some anomalous behaviors if you set the rules up uh, when I was playing around with this originally setting up a rule for this demo I accidentally selected less than 50% and that was also my similar to my scale down so it never actually scaled up I was like why and then I a closer examination I realized that I had picked the wrong thing and it wasn't going to to, uh, to help me out by giving me some kind of intelligence to tell me you might want to recheck this rule I just accepted it um, but in any case once I fixed it everything worked just fine I'm going to cancel this since I've already defined it now when you have a scale out operation it's almost imperative that you have a scale in operation so that the the elasticity of that scale is there so whenever the cpu load drops back down to below a certain threshold you can scale back in and go back down to whatever it might be for your defaults so in this case i'm doing a less than 25 percent and i'm going to decrease the number of instances by two so if my baseline is at five percent usually and i'm, I'm just going to set a threshold at 25 percent that's usually more or less idle and then uh, if that's the case i can scale the number of instances back down by two down to a minimum of whatever i set down here now once i have the minimum set uh, and the maximum set it's going to operate with within this range of instances so i'm using a uh, standard here a standard plan so I have a maximum number of 10 they won't let me create many more than 10 instances of my application however if I had a premium I could uh, premium tier app service I could set more instances so if I but in any case since I'm adding two instances per iteration uh, I am going to set a maximum of nine since I'm starting at one. It would go one, three, five, seven, then nine, and then back down, you know, nine, seven, five, three, then one. So I have several uh, steppings that I would have in my auto scale here. So with this in mind, I can actually run a little demo to show you the scale and show you what the output of that would look like. So here in the app service, I can go over here to the overview and I can show you the endpoint of what I'm actually doing here. This is the actual endpoint, the URL for that. So if I paste this in and then I uh, go to the endpoint, it's going to give you the same API that I had when I was running this in my Visual Studio environment. So with that, with that endpoint, I can then use something like JMeter to configure a test that will force a auto scale operation to happen now inside of my uh, auto scale test here what i've done is i've configured jmeter to spin up up to 600 uh, requests that would be you know threads that is it calls it those are 600 simultaneous requests going into the application and then it does a two and a half minute ramp up so it iterates over that uh, set of requests over a period of about two and a half minutes so it's going to be adding in about four requests per second and that will put some load on the http uh, endpoint that i have defined here and i'm defined that by just uh, uh, requesting tw uh, the prime numbers from zero to twenty thousand so that puts a substantial load on that app service because calculating the, the uh, prime numbers between uh, 2 and 20,000 is going to generate a long list and it's going to be iterating over a lot of uh, uh, loops in order to produce that list using the inefficient algorithm that I'm using to do that. So it's a, a CPU intense operation. So if I kick that off, it's going to start spinning that up up here and you can see it. And then I can look at the graph results here, just this is graphically depicting it. But I'm going to 
let this test run. And then once it does, uh, I'm going to shut it down. And then the scale operation is going to shut down. And uh, then we can go in and look at the metrics inside the app uh, and see the scale operations going up and then back down while this uh, runs. And then uh, after I shut it down. You can see here now that I have scaled up to nine instances of my application. So I'm going to go down here to JMeter and shut this down so that it will scale back down to one. Now we've scaled back down to one instance of the application running. And since that happened, I can go over here and look at run history and I can see a list of invocations over the last hour or so of things ramping up right here along the uh, data that was giving back the telemetry back up to nine instances. And then it ran at nine instances for a few minutes and then it scaled back down right here. And so um, I just pulled this up. So it's uh, the telemetry still coming in for the last few minutes, but you can see there uh, the auto scale worked well to get it up to nine instances for the processing. And then I shut off, shut it off. And then it scaled back down accordingly because of the processing being cut off and then the HTTP queue being processed and then no more requests coming in from my J meter. So it scales back down. Well, so with auto scale, you can increase the availability of your application dynamically and increase your capacity dynamically so that your cost will be more in line with the actual work coming into your environment and then you can scale down whenever that work falls off. So you can also schedule scales as well. And there's a lot of other things that you can do with auto scale because it gives you a nice set of tools that you can use to shape the performance of your application according to the traffic patterns or the usage patterns of your application. And all the metrics that are available on Azure can be used to invoke these uh, triggers. And then you can set the scale up, you know, either more linearly like I did here or exponentially by based on percentages or other type schemes like that. So this uh, demo just shows you that it does work and it does work well for what I'm doing. So next time we're going to be looking at some other features on Azure App Services. So stay tuned next time for more about App Services on Tech on Fire with Blade. If you like this content, please consider visiting us online at www.wintelect.com and there you can find about services that Wintelect offers including including training and consulting services. Also, please consider subscribing to this channel by clicking on the subscribe button and clicking the bell icon to get notifications when new content becomes available and also comment down below. You can also follow me on Twitter at the one mule and also follow Winelect on Twitter at Winelect now or at Winelect. We are constantly posting things about Azure related technologies and things related to software development. You can also reach us by email at consulting at Until next time, thank you.